Hey, welcome to the Godspeed Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna show you two different methods to check your push rod length. So I have here the 5.3 LS truck motor that I'm building for old Grampy back here, my 54 Chevy Bel Air. And I've done a lot of stuff to this motor. I upgraded the cam to a much bigger lift. I had some machine work done to both the block and the heads, and I'm running stronger springs. So all of these things will kind of add up, and if you do anything to your valve train, you definitely want to check your push rod length. You don't want to just install them on these LS blocks because these are non-adjustable rockers. They're not like your grandpa's old 350 that had the adjustment nut and you just get it until it stops ticking. The LS rockers are not adjustable. You just basically bolt them down onto the stand and that's where they stay. So it's really important that you check your push rod length. Now you do have some wiggle room because these LS7 lifters that I put in here have about 200 thousandths of travel and the preload on it, I've heard anywhere from like 40 thousandths on up to 100 thousandths or 120 thousandths. If you look online, you'll find a whole bunch of different results. Generally speaking, you kind of want to be sort of in the middle. So we're shooting for somewhere around 70, 75 thousandths of preload on these lifters. So the first thing you want to do is get the lifter on the base circle of the cam. The base circle on the cam is basically the opposite side of where the lobe is. Anywhere on that base circle is fine for checking your push rod length. The way that this is designed is the intake is on the base circle when the exhaust is at the lobe. So on these LS heads, the way to tell which one is an intake and which one is the exhaust is the exhaust rocker lines up with the exhaust port on the outside of your head. The intake port is a little off center, so it's actually right in between the two rockers, but if you look for the exhaust port, it lines up with the exhaust rocker. So this one's the intake, this one's the exhaust. So the easiest way to get the lifter on the base circle of the cam is to put your finger on the rocker and the push rod that's on the exhaust side and you want to turn the motor clockwise and then you'll start to feel that one go up. And when it stops going up, that's at the top of that lobe. And you want to keep going until it just starts to go down and now you are sure that when the exhaust is on the lobe, the intake is on the base circle. So now we can adjust our intake push rod. So we can remove the intake rocker, and this is just an eight millimeter socket. So to check your push rod length, you need to get one of these push rod checkers. Now this one is from CompCams. It's part number 7702-1, and it goes from 6.8 to 7.8. This one from CompCams has this line on both sides of it, and as you unscrew it, every full revolution is 50 thousandths. So all you gotta do is keep track of how many times you go around, and then you add that all up, and that gives you your overall length. These stock factory push rods on this 5.3, they measure 7.4 inches. So for a starting point, I'm gonna put my checker at about 7.3 inches and see where we're at. So you've got 6.8. So we're gonna go 50 thousandths for each full turn. So we got, there's 85, 90, 95, 100, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's 7.3 right there. So at 7.3, we'll drop this in the hole, being careful not to twist it. Just kind of make sure it's on the lifter. Then we'll reinstall our rocker. Again, making sure the rocker is on the push rod and the valve. Now what you're looking for is zero lash. So with this hand snug like this, and still hear a little bit of tapping. So with a little bit of tapping at 7.3, that's a little too short. So let's go 7.35. We'll go one more full revolution. So that should be 7.35 right there. Again, just hand tight. And there is zero lash but it's pretty tight, so I'm gonna split the difference. Let's go 7.325, right? That's the middle, if I'm doing my math right. So now we'll go in, so righty tighty, and I wanna go to where these are on the back side. 
not there. Make sure we're on the lifter. Well, still feels a little tight to me, so let's knock it off just a hair from there. So we'll go in about a quarter turn this time. So now we should be at 7.3125. I mean, there's barely, you have to kind of pull on it a little bit, but I can kind of feel it wiggling and it's just about there. So I'm gonna say 7.3125 is about the right length for these. Cause you can barely get any kind of lash. You have to kind of pull on it, which means I'm pushing on the lifter down there to get it to wiggle, but that's just about right. So now we gotta do some math. But before we get to the math on this, I wanna take my checker out and actually spin it to double check to make sure that my number that I'm keeping track of is actually what this actually is. Here's our quarter turn. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So 10.25, and each revolution is 50 thousandths, so times 0 0.05 equals 5125. So if we add that to the bottom of our checker, 6.8, we get 73125, which is what we did. So now we gotta account for our preload, which again is anywhere from I would say 50 thousands on up to 100 thousand. So let's go happy medium of 75 thousands. And we're at 7.3875. But since there is a bit of flexibility with these LS7 lifters, you can count that as 7.4 when you'll be totally fine. In fact, a little bit on the long side, if you round up, actually is better. Richard Holdner's got a video that he tests different length push rods in this 5.3 and found that up to 7.5 on a stock motor actually adds power. But you don't want to go too long because that'll hold your valve open and then your engine won't even run. You definitely don't want to go too short because then you got the sewing machine effect where it just tap, 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 tap all day long enough to drive a person insane. So 7.4, according to this test, is just about right. Let's move on to the second test. Now in this second test, also known as the turn test, you're actually accounting for your lifter preload. And again, you're gonna wanna start with it on the base circle. Since we're already at the base circle from the first step, we're gonna call it good there. But just make sure you're on the base circle if you choose to use this step. On this turn test, anywhere from like a half a turn to one and a half turns is about the right zone you want to be in. Any more than that, if you go more than one and a half turns, you're in the danger zone of the push rod being too long and it'll actually hold the valve open. But if you get it too short, there again, you won't even get to zero lash and it'll actually rattle like a sewing machine. So once again, we'll start with our push rod at 7.3. Careful not to turn it when you drop it in there. Make sure we're on the lifter. Install the rocker. And on this test, again, you just want to get to zero lash, just finger tight. So there you go, again, just like on our last test, 7.3 is not nearly long enough because you can still hear the tapping. So let's go on up to 7.4, there's 35, 7.4, 35. Again, we're just finger tightening it until we get zero lash, just until it stops tapping. In the finger tight method, you're just barely turning this, just until you feel it snug. We've got zero latch, no tapping. Now, this is where you want to count your turns. So we'll start here. We're gonna go, let's see, half a turn, full turn, and there's snug right there. So just past one full turn, which is well within the half to one and a half turn radius. 7.4 is good, 7.3 was too short. Let's try 7.45. Now once again, we'll count the turns. Half turn, one, there's your one and a half. So 7.45 is right about the max of where you would want to run these. Just for fun, let's try 7.5. 
Okay, count the turns. We got half, one, half, one and three quarters at 7.5, which is outside the range we want to be in. Remember, one and a half turns is about the max. Any more than that, you might run the risk of floating these valves open. So let's go to our measurement on the last test, which is 7.3875. So just so we make sure that we don't lose track, let's just start over. So there's 6.8, 85, 90, 95, 100, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 plus quarter turn. And count the turns. Half. So we're a little over half, not quite three quarters. That's within range. So now we've kind of found our range of where we can be as far as the pushrod length goes. Looks like about 7.4 or the factory stock pushrods are going to be about the right length even after all of the stuff I did on this motor. Two different methods, both are just as effective. Anyway, I hope this helped you out. If it did, give that like button a smash and hit the subscribe button for more videos. Get yourself some merch, some good t-shirts, and make sure you comment and share with your friends and I'll see you on the next one.